I'm Doug, and we're going to talk about delivering fast and beautiful images on the web. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm Doug, quick introductory slides. I'm originally from Seattle, um, but I've been traveling around Europe for four years with my family as a digital nomad. I do freelance developer relations. I help people speed up their web pages, their native apps. I wrote a book on how to speed up Android apps. That's the URL to the PDF if you want to download it. And I'll post the slides later so you don't have to take a photograph and hope it comes out uh, to get the URL. Um, if you ever want to reach me, I'm Doug Sillers on the internet. I'm the only one, so I'm easy to find. Uh, Twitter, Gmail, all that stuff. Um, so we're going to start off looking. It's kind of hard to see, but um, there's a walkway right here, and it's nailed to the side of an Alp in Switzerland. And so how many of you sort of get nervous thinking about walking across this walkway that's literally nailed to the side of an Alp? Yeah, just about everybody. Uh, I walked across this a few years ago with my family, and my six-year-old daughter jumped as she walked across it, so it rattled the whole time we were walking on it, which added a little bit more to the experience. Um, but interestingly, like four or five years ago, Ericsson did a study, and they put sensors on people's heads to measure stress responses to different things. And they found that thinking about standing on the edge of a cliff raises your stress level. Um, they actually found that a slow mobile website is more stressful <laughs> than standing on the edge of a cliff. So, if, you know, we don't want to have slow websites because slow websites, if people are frustrated, they tend to, you know, when you go to a mall, it's always happy music and bright lights, so you're happy because you spend more money. But if you're already frustrated when you go to the website, you're not going to visit as often. You're probably going to leave a lot sooner. And if it's an e-commerce site, they're going to spend less money. All right. There's data behind this. Google found that a 3% delay causes you to lose half of your customers. Uh, a half second delay increases people's frustration and lowers their engagement. Both Amazon and Walmart found that um, people spend less money when the web page is slower, just even 100 milliseconds. And a study a few years ago found that 4% of mobile users admit to throwing their phones when there's a slow website. So we really don't want to have slow websites. But what makes up web pages? And this is 10,000 web pages from earlier this year on mobile. And the bottom is blue, and that's your images. And so you can see that images make up anywhere from about a third to you know, 80% of the tonnage on every single web page. Right? So if we can make the images smaller and have them still look beautiful, which is what we're going to talk about today, we can lower the tonnage of the web page, meaning it's going to load faster. And if it loads faster, we'll have happier customers. Anyone use Lighthouse? Lighthouse fans, yes. Great to see all those hands. So those who don't know, Lighthouse is a free open source tool from Google. It's inside Chrome DevTools. It's inside Web Page Test. And it will help you figure out speed optimizations for your web page. It also helps you with accessibility. Um, there are four optimizations inside Lighthouse for images, quality, format, sizing, and lazy loading. Um, web page test fans. Yes, I love all those hands. Again, at a great free open source tool to test how fast your web page is. Um, and you can, there are instances all around the world, so you can see how fast your page loads in America, in Ireland, in Singapore, right? You can test all sorts of cool things. Um, a really neat tool built on top of web page tests is called the HTTP Archive. And the HTTP Archive tests uh, 5 million web pages every month and throws them all into a SQL database. So you get all the web page test results for 5 million web pages that you can then query and learn about. Um, just earlier this month, uh, web, the HTTP Archive uh, published this giant article, the um, State of the Web or something like, the Web Almanac is what we're calling it. And it's got like 13 chapters with all this information pulled out of the HTTP Archive. Really cool information. Um, I wrote part of the, uh, the media chapter. Um, but what we can do is because the HTTP Archive has web page test data and Lighthouse data, is we can see how the web is built based on these four best practices. So the image quality test, uh, Lighthouse says, save all your images at 85%. 
And so when you lower the quality of an image, obviously you're increasing the compression, but you can also make the image have pixelization in it. Uh, Lighthouse found that 85% nobody really notices, and you generally make the image half the original size. So you can use image magic from the command line to save it at 85% quality. You can use a cloud-based tool like Cloudinary where you upload the full-size image. You get a URL and you can just add that Q85 parameter in there and it returns the quality 85 image for you automatically. You can't tell from this projector, but that's the 100% image, that's the 85% image. What you can see is it goes from 3.6 to 1.87 megabytes. It's half the size, but it still looks awesome. Um, a year ago in the HTTP archive, a third of the internet was failing this and 43% were passing. This year we're at about the same, 48% pass and 32% fail. They changed the scoring a bit, but still a third of the internet is failing this. Um, of these sites that are failing, the median page would be 3.7 seconds faster and use 133K less data. These sites down here would be 10 seconds faster and use 1.6 megabytes less data. So there's a huge, and that's the median. So there's like 8% there. So 4% of websites are actually worse than this. You can save it at 50%. And if this projector had a little bit more light, you might see some pixelization in the sky. And usually 20% looks horrible too, but you can't tell on this projector either. So like, <laughs> We could get away with a 500K image if all monitors looked like this one, but we can't. Um, this image actually looks like crap right here on my screen, and I have a crappy old Mac, so. Um, but this one looks good. We know that one is bad. It'd be really neat if you could even find a better quality metric than 85%. Google came up with 85% because it works for most images. Um, there are tools that will do better than that. <clears throat> um, Google actually has a tool called Booter Augly. Um, all of Google's compression engineers are in Switzerland and they name everything after pastries. <laughs> um, and structural similarity is the one I'm going to use. There's open source tools that will do it. Uh, Cloudinary will do it. So this is a, a Tobias Baldoff built a tool that will do it. Um, you say Q auto with Cloudinary. And what this does is structural similarity lowers the quality to where the human eye can't tell the difference. So if it looks perfect to the human eye, we might as well remove as many pixels as we can to make the, the file smaller. And you can't tell, it's still, it, this one still looks awesome. It's 400K smaller than 85%. So we shaved off another 400K and nobody is the wiser. Um, what we can also see is load these images up in web page test on a 3G connection. And you can see we took it from 21 seconds down to nine and a half seconds. So we're drastically speeding up the delivery of this image. It's still over a megabyte, right? It's still a megabyte and a half. It's still too big, <clears throat> but we'll work on that. The second optimization inside Lighthouse is the format. Um, there are a lot of different image formats out there, right? We've got JPEGs, which are definitely the most popular. We've got GIFs, we've got PNGs. Um, let's talk about SVGs for a little bit. Vector graphics are really cool. Um, they're infinitely scalable because they're drawn to shapes and they're basically XML documents. So that Twitter icon is the same icon and you just stretch it and because they're all vectors, it just scales no matter what and it's awesome. Uh, there's a web page out there that has this red logo of a target. And <clears throat> I knew something was immediately wrong with this SVG. Um, so I opened up the SVG and these are all the circles. And then you can see it says Adobe Illustrator and then, and so what's happening here is Adobe Illustrator, I think what it's doing is base 64 encoding the original image and just throwing it in as metadata because why not? It was 946K. So the solution is to, on line 30, to click, drag to the bottom and press delete, 1K. <laughs> Um, this is more of a, if you see an SVG that's that big, something's wrong and you should probably not launch that to production. It's more of just a testing thing. You can gzip that to 600 bytes. You can use Brotly, take it down to 500 bytes. Again, a, a, a Google compression algorithm. Um, they had two. There's the orange one. It was also 946 kilobytes. For those of you in the know, you can style 
SVGs to just change the color, so two lines of, uh, of CSS and you've turned it from red to orange, or you can go the 1.8 megabyte approach that this web page is doing. We all know which one is gonna be faster. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, another funny thing I see happen with a lot of images is PNGs, great format, it's got transparency. Um, however, a lot of the PNGs I see on the internet have sort of this format. And if you're a Mac user, you'll recognize this format of screen underscore shot underscore year day month, it's American month day at time, right? So this is a screenshot. Somebody got the perfect thing on their Mac and went and took a screenshot and then pushed it to production. Um, this is not ideal. Um, I don't have the slide here, but basically I found that 2% of the web has a screenshot an image with the parameter screenshot in the, in the, in the name of the file. <clears throat> I took 3,000 of them, turned them to JPEG, saved them at uh, QAuto. 35% um, of them were 10% the original size. Like, screenshots are awesome. These are screenshots of graphs that I made. This is a screenshot of a tweet I made, right? They're great, but you need to compress it and change the format before you push it live onto the internet. And 2% of the web has screenshots on their web page according to the HTTP archive. Um, so the best practice inside uh, Lighthouse says you should use WebP or JPEG 2000, depending on the browser. Um, JPEG 2000 is supported by Safari, and WebP is supported by all the other major modern browsers. Um, so I'll, I'll just use WebP as the term here because it works in you know, everything but IE and Safari. Um, so when I save this same image as a WebP, it goes from 1.4 megabytes to about one megabyte. So I saved another 400K. Um, if you, don't, if you ha have users, if you still have to support things like IE11, you can use the picture tag where you serve a WebP. If the browser doesn't know what to do with the WebP, it will fall back to the JPEG because every browser supports JPEG. Um, and you should always have alt text. Um, but as you can see, when I use a WebP, it goes from nine and a half seconds down to seven seconds. We're still speeding up this image delivery. We shaved off another two and a half seconds here. Um, if we look a year ago, two thirds of the web was failing this best practice and uh, almost two thirds of the web is still failing this best practice. Unfortunately, um, that's from this year. Um, the median page would be 6.6 .6 seconds faster by changing the image format of the images on the web page. Um, these down here, 26% uh, of the web, uh, would, the median page would be 15 seconds faster. And because that's the median, that means that 13% of the web would actually be save even more than 15 seconds on load time on a mobile connection. Like there's a huge potential to speed up the web here. Uh, sizing of images sort of makes the most sense. It's responsive images, right? You serve a different size image to this than you do to this, than you do to a screen like this. Um, as an example, um, this image right here was uh, 13 million pixels. It was 1.6 megabytes. I do all the optimizations. I get it down to 800K, <clears throat> but it's still 13 million pixels. So when I serve it to a small device, only 500,000 pixels show up on the screen, so my phone ends up throwing away 12.5 million pixels. So people on these small devices are getting taxed doubly. They have to download the entire file, and then the phone CPU has to fire up and throw away 95, 97% of the pixels that were downloaded before it could show up on the screen. Um, it's kind of like when you buy something from Amazon. Can you see that? and you get a giant box full of brown paper and you have to go around and then find the thing in the bottom, right? We're doing this with images on the web today and we shouldn't do that. There is a problem with that. So this is a different image. This image was originally 16 million pixels and I downsized it to be 1 million pixels. And then what I did is I measured how much time it took the CPU to decode the image to throw away 15 million pixels. And on the desktop, it was really fast. It took less than 100 milliseconds. That's gonna be instantaneous. On a Motorola G4, sort of a mid-range Android device, it took 200 milliseconds. 
On the Alcatel One X, which was on sale last year, it's an Android Go device. It has a really, really crappy processor in it. It takes 800 milliseconds to throw away all of those extra pixels. So of course, the problem with that is it's just making your web page appear even slower. Um, it probably also causes the phone to heat up because the CPU is firing, draining the battery faster. Um, it can really hurt people who are on really low-end devices. And when you look, this is from Akamai, showing all of the different devices that hit Akamai that were Android. And green means fast, so these are all Samsungs, right? Lots of, device, lots of users. But you can also see there are a lot of red and oranges over here, and those are really slow devices. So big images are gonna take a long time to appear to those customers. Um, so the way you solve this, of course, is you generate a bunch of different images. In this example, I did 25 kilobytes different in size. I generated 20 different images. That's probably too many. Maybe you do four, maybe you do five different sizes. If you look at what devices are hitting your server and look at the sizes and make that decision. Um, but when I serve the right size of image, now I'm only using 100,000 pixels. I'm only throwing away 100,000 pixels as opposed to 12 and a half million. Um, I used Responsive Breakpoint Generator. It's a web page. They have a, a way you can automate this as well. It's up on GitHub. Um, when I do that, now I'm serving the right size, width, and height to this mobile device. So it's only 121 kilobytes, and it only takes two seconds to get delivered to the mobile phone. So by optimizing the, the format, the size, and the quality, I've taken it from 21 almost 22 seconds down to just over two seconds for that image to load. Huge improvement. So if we look at responsive use on the web, last year 57% of the web was passing. This year 58% of the web is passing this best practice. Um, we could still have room for improvement here. A quarter of the web is failing. We could speed up our pages median 1.6 seconds. These folks down here, they're probably all the same websites that are failing all these best practices. But we could, we're still looking at 14 seconds faster load time, 2.4 megabytes less data. Um, these are web pages that are obviously serving huge images to mobile devices. So the first three best practices are all things we can do to one image at a time. Lazy loading is uh, something we can do to our web page. And there's JavaScript libraries that will do this for us. <clears throat> and the idea is if you have a web page with six images, only load the ones that show up on the screen at load time. And then using the intersection observer, as somebody scrolls through, you load the images lazily as they scroll through the page. Obviously, if at load time, if you only load two images versus six, the page is gonna load faster. Um, huge improvement this, oh, year over year. So a year ago, 22% of the web was passing. This year, 56% of the web is passing. So a lot of people are implementing lazy loading. These folks that are still failing could be three seconds faster. These folks way down here at the bottom could be 12 seconds faster. Um, there is a lot of performance potential by lazy loading images. Uh, a lot of the way people do this is they have, it's hard to tell on this projector, but when you do a Google image search for cats in costume, you get uh, one color placeholder images. So this is green, trust me, it's green. And after the image loads, it's a cat dressed up like a dinosaur. And this one is pink, and it's a cat dressed up like a bunny rabbit. And so these are you know, one color SVGs. They're a couple hundred bytes. And they load instantaneously. They're part of the HTML. And then when the, when the actual image loads, it just replaces it. So you, you've got the placeholder image, and then the, the actual image replaces it. <clears throat> this is a, some waterfalls. And this is a, a squib, so it actually has more texture than just being green. It has some green and white, it's a little fancier. Um, it's, it's an open source tool, so you can play with that if you're interested. <clears throat> so a lazy loading experiment, I built this web page. It's like 12 megabytes, it has huge images on it. And this is the desktop view. You know, these are all the different screens that you can see. Um, it's just way zoomed out. And so as the page loads, you start with the text, and you can see that the text keeps reflowing as more images pop into place. And it's sort of hard to tell again, but uh, you can see up here, 
on screen four, there's still an image missing at the top of the screen, right? So if you're a user, you might still be sitting at the top of the screen waiting for that image to load. But all of these images down here are fully loaded. So the browser's loading the images, but not in an order that makes sense to a user. Uh, we'd expect the images to load from top to bottom. And so inside Chrome, they've enabled lazy loading. And so you can turn on lazy loading, and what happens is it figures out the layout of the entire page, where all the images go at the very beginning of page load. So you can see the entire page is now laid out and the placeholder images have all been put into place. And now what happens is the images load from top to bottom. So as our customers, as our users scroll through the page, the images are loading in the order that we actually consume the content. And so that makes a lot of sense. Um, and so this is built into Chrome today. You can check it out. There's been a lot of blog posts about it this year. Um, and so that's what's in Lighthouse, but let's talk about a few other things that we can do to optimize uh, images on the web. Who loves animated GIFs? Everybody, or half the people, that's awesome. When I lived in Seattle, I had a goat. I had goats, and this is Nora. And I thought, we need to make an animated GIF of Nora. And the problem is when I take that, the movie, which is 1.4 megabytes, and I make an animated GIF, it goes to 3.8 megabytes. Um, so if you go back to 1990 and you read the spec, the GIF format is not intended as a platform for animation, even though it can be done in a limited way. Like, the spec tells us we shouldn't be using animated GIFs. Um, but, you know, that ship has sailed. Um, the problem is, animated GIFs, if you have 30 frames per second, it's literally 30 GIFs that just, there's no compression through time videos compressed through time. <coughs> and so if I save this as a movie, it's only 250K. It's a lot smaller. The couple things here, one is uh, GIFs are only 256 colors, so I stripped out thousands of colors. I also removed the audio track because GIFs are silent. And then, um, you know, I made it a GIF. And you might be thinking, but what about Twitter? They use GIFs. For those of you who can't see, it says GIF in the corner. They're lying. It's a movie. <laughs> so whenever so you've got a GIF in Slack, when you've got a GIF on Twitter, when you've got a GIF on Facebook, it's a movie. And the reason it's a movie is that movie is only 400K. It's a lot faster to load. So sort of GIF the medium is OK, but GIF the format. No, we don't want to use that. And so of course, the way you do this is you use the video tag. You set it to loop and to autoplay. That makes sense because GIFs loop and you want it to autoplay. You have to set it to muted. And that's because videos don't play automatically on mobile unless they're muted in the browser. That's true for both mobile Chrome and mobile Safari. And so that will play. I turned off the controls so you can't start and stop it. Um, if you're really adventurous, you can actually put movies in the picture tag and that will work on Safari. Um, you don't have, it only works on Safari. Um, I'd recommend just using the video tag because that works everywhere. Um, so that animated GIF of Nora uh, the goat takes 22 seconds to load on a 3G connection. If I make it a movie, it takes four and a half seconds. It's sort of a no-brainer. We're gonna make that GIF, ap GIF appear a lot faster if we use it as a video. Uh, WebP has an animated format too. It doesn't save you a whole lot. Uh, before I go, the other things that we can do is who knows about light mode on Android? It used to be called data saver mode. And what happens is if you have an Android phone and you go into your settings, you can turn on light mode. And what that does is it turns on the save data header. So that means every request to every server you make adds a header that says, whoa, send me less stuff. And this is about a year old, but uh, Tim found that 5% of his users had this header turned on. If 5% of his customers are telling him, send me less stuff, he can send them a lower quality version of all the images that he's got, maybe one size smaller, um, maybe even remove the videos. Um, so there's, if you can look at that, you can actually decide if you want to serve less content to your customers. Uh, <coughs> Cloudinary. Uh, will actually serve smaller versions. So if I have it set to auto quality, right, the structural similarity, it'll actually serve a more compressed version, 
saving 45 kilobytes, making that image smaller. So it automatically, there are some services that just automatically say, oh, save data, we're gonna serve less stuff. Um, and then the network info API. We should look at the network info API. It will give you uh, the estimated downlink connection. And so I've had the opportunity to travel all over Europe and I've stayed at some Airbnbs with really, really, really slow internet. Really slow internet. I was in uh, West Cork, Ireland and it had Wi-Fi, but it was connected to a 3G router that only had edge. And so, for the whole house, for the whole house at one o'clock in the morning when all, all the iPhones turned off in the whole neighborhood, it got fast. <laughs> so when I needed, I needed to do some work that week, so I just worked from like one until six and then slept all morning, because I had fast, in every, but then everybody woke up at six and the internet went back down to like, I, had, I have a screenshot of a 400 second ping to Google. 400 seconds. Uh, yeah, so anyway, when I was there, Facebook didn't show movies. It didn't show GIFs. All of that stuff just disappeared. And then when I went into town and I fired up Facebook, I got images and movies and GIFs. Facebook saw I was on a slow connection and served me different content based on the speed of my network. So we can do the same with our web pages. Twitter will do the same thing. It just, it does, the GIFs will have a play on it as opposed to automatically auto-playing. Um, so in conclusion, we can optimize our images for quality, format, sizing, lazy loading. We should turn our animated GIFs to movies and we should look at the headers that our customers have. Those are the tools I used. Uh, web page test, HTTP archive, image magic, structural similarity, uh, lazy sizes, responsive breakpoints, and Cloudinary. Um, all really great tools. A lot of them are open source. Cloudinary is not open source, but it has a really generous free tier. So you can get away with a lot of stuff using it. Um, and in conclusion, images can be beautiful and fast. So with that, thank you very much for listening. I appreciate it.